What's up everyone? So today's video, we're gonna be just getting into the Pro Charger install finally. So for this build, we're not gonna do it all at once. We're not gonna take the truck completely out of commission and do everything all at once. Because this is a daily driver, we're basically gonna be doing it in steps, starting with the easy stuff right now, which is the gauges. So today's video, we're gonna be installing the wideband O2 sensor gauge and also the boost gauge. Um, so I'll be showing you guys how to do that, but basically you're gonna see a series of videos showing all the different steps on installing this kit. Maybe the way I'm doing it where you don't wanna take the truck at a complete commission or out of service, which is what I need since it's a daily driver. But today's video, we're gonna install the gauges and I'll show you guys how we're getting that done. All right, so here's the gauges. I showed these in another video before. We have the AEM air fuel ratio gauge, wideband 02. And the other one is the AEM True Boost. It's actually a boost controller, but for now we're just gonna be using it as a boost gauge. Uh, we might get into some funny stuff later, not funny I should say, but more technical stuff later. And then we have the Auto Meter Two Pod uh, A-Pillar Gauge Holder. So oddly enough, this doesn't fit right now, so it just needs to be opened up a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a Dremel just so we can squeeze these in here. I don't wanna break my gauges. Um, we don't have to open up much, but just a hair just to get these to sit in here. So let's go ahead, open those up, slide those in there, and then we can start getting into uh, the rest of it with the wiring and whatnot. All right, so here we are again, guys. Like you can see, it almost wants to fit, but it's just ever so slightly a bit too tight. So we're gonna go ahead and just open it up just a hair. I have the Dremel here with just a sanding tool. So I'm basically just gonna run this around a few times on both of them, because they're both having the same issue. So we can fit these in here and then we'll continue. Okay, so we got the gauges both in. They just needed a tiny bit more uh, play or clearance on them and then they basically went in. But until we get this actually bolted up, we won't know exact orientation on how to clock them or where to clock these gauges, but at least they're in now. They're sitting flush on both. So we can go ahead, go back to the truck and continue the install. One more thing we will do is these are the two wiring harnesses. This one is really big because it's for the boost gauge, boost controller. So it actually has two wires that will lead to a boost controller later if we decide to implement something like that. But um, we can go ahead and plug in our harness and basically these two harnesses will go in and that'll go to the wiring. So let's go back to the truck. So we're gonna take off the existing A-pillar handle and it's held on with two 10 millimeters. Um, you have to be very delicate with these uh, clips if you don't wanna mark it and you, you know don't wanna waste or ruin the old one. Be conscious of which way these things flip out. So this one flips out down that way and this one flips up that way. That way when you're prying, you're not trying to pry up the opposite ends and uh, have it fight you. So we're gonna take out these two 10 mils. And then once we have these out, we can of course see which way our gauges line up. Okay, with the two 10 mils removed, you're gonna have to give it a little tug to get out of there. And like so, because there is a clip here that plugs into there. So that's out of the way. This is how the replacement one is going to look. And that's how it looks, guys. I'm pretty happy with it. Actually, once you get in there, it all seems to fit well. So here is the alignment. We got the alignment pretty close. We're going to have to mess with it a little bit, but um, the boost one looks good. We'll probably just have to rotate this uh, air fuel a little bit. All right, we got everything aligned. Let's go ahead and start hooking some stuff up. All right, so this is the wire that comes from the Wideband O2 sensor. Uh, I had this installed the other week. Of course, I don't do welding uh, or don't have the equipment to do welding right now myself. So I had to get somebody to weld it. Basically, we installed the Wideband O2. Nothing too fancy. This wire just runs to the Wideband. Uh, the Wideband will be running off the driver's side before the catalytic converter. Um, and that's where that is placed. Basically, this just has to run up to the gauge and plug in. So that we're gonna have to feed through the firewall in a second, but we also have to feed a vacuum line or uh, basically manifold pressure to the boost gauge as well. So that's where this thing comes in. This is this manifold block that I showed in another video, and this is gonna be our line with our push to connect fitting on it. And we're gonna do away with this later as well. For now, we're just gonna put a plug in it, um, but this is gonna be running to the bypass valve for the supercharger later. So. We can of course still run a boost gauge even though we don't have boost. 
and this is the vacuum line here that we are going to need to replace so i'll get some light on it here but basically it's the one off the brake booster so we're gonna have to pop off this um also have to pop off the intake to get to it so we'll replace this line with one that's already cut normally from pro charger you're just going to get this manifold but the previous owner since the supercharger kit is used he basically just included his cut um brake booster line already so that's going to save me some work and also save me my brake booster line we'll just go ahead and pop this one on there and we'll be all set Okay, so this brake booster line basically just goes to the top of the manifold. You can see that nipple there that I just pulled it off of. There's no clip on it. And we're gonna go ahead and remove it from the brake booster as well. Okay, so I was just doing some double checking on the instruction manual from Pro Charger and what I have. And this hose actually looks like it's a stock length. Basically, it's just cut there. Um, and you're supposed to actually remove three inches of it. Um, nothing wrong with that, but we just wanna do it a little bit cleaner just so we don't have an excess of uh, hose bundled up there because this is the look we're going for. So basically it's gonna come out of there and just almost by the dipstick is where this manifold is gonna go. So if you guys look, I have the two hoses laid out, my stock one and this one that's uh, that we have that was already cut. And basically you can see they're pretty much the same length. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop out three inches out of this hose so that it's actually the correct length for what we're doing and that way we can uh, we can have it looking like this and uh, it's not going to be bunched up. So let's go ahead and trim the hose. Alright so we got three inches chopped out of the hose. One reason why you might not want to remove this and why the previous owner might have chose not to is if you ever wanted to go back to stock of course your, sh your hose would be too short because you would be missing three inches whereas just cutting it there pushing the two ends out a little bit further. You could still maybe put a union in there and connect the two, but since we have two hoses and I can still retain my factory one, we're gonna go ahead and chop out that section which we just did and let's put it all together. All right, so the hose is all assembled with three inches removed. And what we're gonna do next is because we don't have the supercharger fully installed and we don't have the bypass valve installed, of course we're gonna have to do something about this because we don't want a vacuum leak and this is the one that's gonna be running to our boost gauge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this one and the plug that I took from here, we're basically gonna put it here for now. All right, so the hose is all assembled with three inches removed. And what we're gonna do next is because we don't have the supercharger fully installed and we don't have the bypass valve installed, of course we're gonna have to do something about this because we don't want a vacuum leak and this is the one that's gonna be running to our boost gauge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this one and the plug that I took from here, we're basically gonna put it here for now. I mean, realistically, guys, I could have put my push to connect into here, but I really don't wanna, um, even though it's on the same manifold, I really wanna have the uh, bypass valve to be separate. Even though these two are you know, a little closer together, it shouldn't make a difference, but I really wanna have this one independent of the rest of them. So we're gonna remove that. Temporarily, we're gonna put this in until we get further along in the supercharger install. So we'll install this. It still has some Teflon on it, which uh, will seal it. So I don't have to add any at this point. So we'll tighten this one down. I don't have to go crazy on this stuff, guys. A lot of people get carried away with tightening this stuff. As long as it's snug and has some Teflon on it, you're okay. And then we will go ahead and also tighten down this one, but looks like my 7 16th isn't the same size as these push to connect, so let's get the right size. Okay guys, this is all done. You can see our hose is now installed and we have this over here. Hopefully you can see it, let's get some light on there. Okay, so everything's installed and we have it connected back up to the brake booster. Um, there's no, because we're running low boost, it should be okay. A lot of these vacuum lines and manifold um, lines on here don't have clamps on the other end, like the one that goes on the brake booster here. It doesn't have a uh, clamp on it and it doesn't on the other end. If you started getting into you know 14 PSI and stuff like that, it would start blowing hoses off. So if we ever go high boost down the road, we'll have to start putting some uh, some clamps on these hoses and vacuum and manifold lines because they would start popping off. But with low boost, you know seven eight pounds, it'll be all right. So let's go ahead. We'll throw our intake and our engine cover back on, and then we can go ahead and start running the wires and the uh, vacuum line into the cab so that we can connect them to the gauges. 
All right, guys, so we got the vacuum line and I got the wire for the wideband O2 sensor um, basically taped together. I know this is gonna go through super easy. It's plastic, it's rigid, and I already have an incision made on this rubber boot where we went through before with our QTP cutout electronics. So what we're gonna do now is let's pass it through and let's see if we can get this through here without too much hassle. Okay guys, so we're under the dash. We got everything through nicely without any issues. So here they are. We got our Wideband O2 connection and we also have our vacuum line. I know that's not the best light down here, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna run these up to where the gauges are and uh, I'll show you what we got. So to get them up by the gauges easily, I'm gonna pop this panel out. So basically you can work it from the bottom and work your hand around. So this panel's off, now we can easily get the cables and wiring and hose up to the gauges. So let's go ahead and pass them up through here. I'm gonna leave most of the excess tucked underneath the dash. We'll probably put it over here because obviously these cables are a lot longer than need to. The vacuum line will cut the length, but the cables will leave the excess down here and we'll bundle it up. Let's get them up there first. Okay, now that we have the vacuum line and the wire that goes to the O2 sensor, we're gonna go ahead and get all of our wiring. We got a ton of wires, guys, connected. We're gonna get the vacuum line connected, everything connected so that we can button this up and then we can go and find our power source and figure out where we're gonna tile this stuff. It's probably gonna go in behind here, but let's go ahead and connect everything and then we'll figure out the rest. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and connect all of our wiring. Everything's up here now. So this one goes to our boost gauge. So we'll plug this one in. These two go to the air fuel gauge. We have one that's gonna be the power. And last but certainly not least, we have the vacuum line. And now we can button this up by putting it here. All right, guys, so um, it's a little bit hard to, of course, find wires, do wiring underneath the dash and film and stick a camera in there with good light because even it's hard for good light for myself. But basically, we attached the black wire to ground and then we have a fused power with a fuse tapping off of uh, a switch power source. So I just poked around with a multimeter until I found one that when I turned on the ignition, it had power and when I turned off the ignition, it turned off because we don't want to drain on the system. So that's what we got going on right now. It's working good. Only thing is I rolled the dice on this gauge. Um, this one was used, the True Boost. It doesn't seem to be coming up right now. So um, it might be something wrong with it. I'm gonna poke around with a little bit more, but um, the AEM air fuel does work. So you'll see if I cycle the key, gauge is on, it does its thing. And we're on and then I turn off the power and it turns off but like I said the true boost one something's going on with that one so I gotta maybe send it an AEM see if they can repair it if not that's okay because I got the two of them for an extremely good price it was like 180 bucks for both of them this one alone is like 300 bucks and this one's 160 I think so I did okay and also uh, the solenoid that came with this, uh, the boost control solenoid, is actually about 100 bucks as well. So if I have to recoup some money, it won't be the end of the world. But I'll get to the bottom of that later. But right now, we have all this wiring here. This one would go to a boost control solenoid if we were going to use it. But basically, I'm going to go ahead and tie wrap all this stuff behind the dash neatly. So um, let me go ahead and get that done, and I'll show you guys what it looks like when um, I have everything tied up. Okay, so the wires are basically bundled nicely behind here. Um, again, it's gonna be really hard to show you guys, but basically they're just coiled up and tied so they're not gonna be swinging around or chafing on anything. That's done. Only other thing left to do is put our panel back on. So this basically swings in here. You're gonna wanna tuck it behind your seal, your door seal that is. But it's gonna be a two-hander and you see all the speed clips here, let's pop it in. So let's put this back in. Okay, so panel is in. Only thing left is the vacuum line. So basically, I just trimmed it to length and we plugged it into our push to connect fitting. Super easy and very clean looking. I think the location that we put 
the manifold for the vacuum manifold that was very nice and basically this just runs in here without any kinks and into that gauge that doesn't work. Okay, so thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, give it a thumbs up for me. Make sure you're, you're subscribed. A lot of content on the way, a lot more Hellram build. I gotta diagnose what's going on with that boost gauge. Probably end up getting another one or ship that one out to AEM, see if they can fix it. But like I said, that's part of the gamble when you take uh, buying used parts. You don't know if they're always gonna work, but I'm okay, I'm not mad about it. But everything's hooked up correctly. I double, triple checked it. All the wiring is good. We got, you know, 13 volts and actually when you're running about 14 volts going to the gauge and uh, it's still not powering up because I use a multimeter, check the pins, so it's got power but it's just not powering up unfortunately. But everything's ready for it to go so I'll diagnose the gauge but once it's actually up and running, we got both gauges working, I'll show you guys them working but a lot more on the way guys. Um, we also have the Instagram channel so Check out the Instagram page as well, at Boosted Motorsports. If you're an Instagram person, we're on there too, but wherever you guys want to follow along is cool with me. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.